Paolo! Hey! Hey! How are you, mate? <laughs> What's going on? I'm doing good. Where are you right now? I am in uh, Crete, in Greece. I'm in Greece. All right. Where in Greece? In Crete. It's an island south in the Mediterranean. Yeah, nice, nice. That's, yeah, that's a good place to uh, sit this inspiration yeah. out, right? Yeah, I can't complain at the moment, yeah. That's good. Paolo, I have a few questions um, uh, regarding your traveling around the world. If I got that right, you're already traveling like for four years. What made yep. uh, the first original thought that you want to go traveling around the world? How you came up with this idea? Well, the idea came out uh, as a, something one day that uh, made me change everything, really. Uh, so one day I kind of stopped and uh, uh, I started to think uh, if it was worth the work all my life for, uh, for just uh, collecting money, really, and uh, buying things. And uh, I came to re the realization that uh, I wanted to explore and uh, enjoy my life more uh, at the moment. So when uh, now is five years ago. So oh, already five years. Yeah, it's been five years. Uh, so that was a big, kind of a big choice. Uh, at the beginning, I would just wanted to go around Australia. Uh, but then once I completed the, the loop of Australia, I felt compelled to continue my journey. Okay. So what what made you, um, so um, when you're traveling on a motorcycle, you don't have that much space like to bring all the stuff that belongs to you. What, what are you bringing on your motorcycle? Well, f first of all, I, I sold most of my stuff. So yeah. <laughs> I don't really have much with me at the moment. So I have a set of clothes and uh, a laptop, uh, a camera and uh, some tools, uh, camping gear. And uh, that's pretty much it, really. Yeah, yeah, that's a limited space. So for the audience, if you have any question for Paolo, please use uh, the question poll and put the questions there and we're going through them later. So, um, so you're traveling for four years and I'm pretty sure always the question comes up, how are you able to afford it? Like, uh, you have to have some money to do it. Look, the, the, there isn't a bad, better time to understand how I managed to support myself uh, through, through the years uh, than now. Because um, especially, I don't know if it's over there is the same, but uh, most people are in lockdown now. So uh, they are confined at home and they can't go out. And uh, I'm sure that they can't spend so much money as they used to. Uh, so... Uh, what I, what I managed to do is to um, spend five years like this. <laughs> so I, I, stayed, I stayed home uh, and I just went to work for five years. And everything that I saved in those five years uh, working in Australia, um, I'm using it right now to sustain my, my trip. So it's just a matter of uh spending your money right of course you want to spend it and indulge life and uh, buy expensive things but if you don't uh you just buy food and uh, accommodation you'll be you'll be able to do it uh in the, in the long term obviously yeah so is there an end in uh you see an end coming up that the money is gone soon or you you still good to go for 20 years no i'm I'm oh, I'm pretty much running out of money, but um, yeah. I, I I still keep uh, trying to find a little uh, jobs online, something like this, you know, something just to feed and to pay accommodation and food the daily, and I'll try to keep going as much as I can. Okay. So that's... no 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 end uh, as per now. Do you know the number? How many countries you already traveled? I think it's around like uh, 35 or something, 38. 35. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I don't count them really, but it's sometimes like more or less like that. Was there any 
any like very sketchy situation that you got yourself into? Uh, well, I, I was pretty lucky. Uh, I didn't really encounter many bad situations. Uh, maybe a couple of times in Brazil, uh, some dodgy individuals uh, tried to uh, intimidate me in some sort of ways, but we, if, never really without a weapon or like n never really with a weapon or anything, just like trying to get um, uh, something out of me, but uh, never really a dangerous situation. Okay, that's that's good to hear. So you're traveling with um, with a KTM 1190. Let me pull up a uh, picture here. So this is it's a big bike first of all, but it's also a newer bike with a lot of electric and specific parts to it. I know that a lot of um, uh, motorcycle traveling people that they use like old bikes that are bikes that they can fix on their own and they have like random parts that almost every time works. So how is it to travel like with a KDM 1190? Did you get any time in some issues and you have to fix it and you're not getting the parts? So uh, at the beginning, I just wanted to go around Australia. So I bought my dream bike. So mm -hmm. what I thought was my dream bike, I just bought that. Uh, at the beginning, I had a bit of uh, funds <laughs> still. So I bought this very expensive bike for me. Uh, and after the loop of Australia, I, I found myself with this bike and uh, I loved it. And uh, I didn't really change it for another bike, even though like the electronics or, you know, the, the kind of bike there is, uh, is kind of uh, limiting sometimes in certain countries. But uh, what I found out is that uh, it's not actually true. Uh, even if you travel in South America, uh, most of South America with a Suzuki DR, 600 400 that's basically the best bike with no electronics whatever for adventure riding you still struggle to find parts in most of south america or uh, i believe asia too like it's it's not so common uh, you need to get like local bikes uh, if you want to be uh, safe in that kind of a scenario otherwise any bike will will probably have the same kind of a situation in terms of like finding parts and uh, in terms of breakdowns yeah yeah the first question that i saw is what kind of bike uh, is it my bike is a is it's called adventure bikes they're called adventure bikes they're pretty much all round bikes uh there are um i mean this one in particular is uh, quite a quite a big bike so uh if you're not very tall or um if you it, like it's not like a, a first first bike first uh, first uh, time bike all right so it's a uh, it's kind of a big engine um, mm. but so far you can take the bike everywhere you want if you if you can lift it up <laughs> <laughs> if you can have a heavy bike right okay let me yeah. put in some question that we have in the question poll so as 1000 now post is asking have you had replace or repair anything on the bike yes uh fortunately uh the bike has been very reliable so the engine is still the original one i had to uh, replace the oil uh oil pressure and temperature sensor so there's a sensor that measures the temperature of the oil the engine oil mm -hmm. and that failed me uh failed on me uh on around like 130,000 Ks. So pretty much 80,000 miles. So it's still pretty reliable. <laughs> That's quite, quite a lot for, for a motorcycle. Let's see yes. if you have more questions. Uh, here, That's an interesting one. So after a while you get tired of being on the road, how do you handle that? Yes, what I found out is that uh, our body uh, kind of needs a routine so you have you have to have some sort of a routine in terms of fix, physical exercise and 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 food intake uh, you can't just go on and just not exercise and eat uh, bad stuff or cheap stuff uh, for a long time because your body will you pay the toll after a while so 
uh, you, I definitely felt tired after my uh, North American tr- leg. Uh, that was my f- fourth year. So, yeah, right. a bit tired. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. So um, if somebody is uh, looking into adventure riding now and going for a long journey like you do, maybe not that long, but for a couple of months or so, you have any recommendation for, for the people, for first timers? Mm. Yeah, don't don't let anybody tell you that you don't have the proper bike. <laughs> Any bike will do. Any bike, street bikes, choppers, uh, enduro bikes, doesn't matter. I've seen pretty much any kind of situation possible for uh, in long distance traveling, and it's doable. Mm-hmm. Um... So there's another question coming on from David. Uh, do you plan out your stops or is this more of a drive and find recommendation wherever you stop? So uh, at the beginning, I wasn't really used to, um, to any kind of uh, motorcycle trip, really. So I kind of tried to plan in advance where my stop were going to be. But uh, after a while, I figured out that uh, the, best, the best thing about this motorcycle trip is not to plan nothing to just to leave it up your uh, at the moment and just uh, decide uh, in the morning when you wake up if you feel like riding or you don't uh, you you just decide you just decide where to go and uh, uh, how long you want to ride any day so it's kind of like you have to have a, a general direction where you want to go but in terms of stops not really no, yeah, just wow, just just wing it as uh, Willie just said it in the comments. Great. So I prepared some pictures that you can see here. Can you give us a few comments where you were, why you took the picture there? Uh, give us some insight. Yeah, this one is a picture that I took in uh, Albania. So okay. Albania is kind of a it was a new country for me too even though I, I was born and raised in italy and it's not too far from uh from us uh very uh i didn't know much about the country and uh yes some amazing off-road uh, uh trails um there's also a very famous one is called the trans-european trail is a basically a, a off-road tracks that go all over uh, europe and uh, I could only do uh, certain parts because it was winter. So most of the rivers were still uh, flowing and full of water. So I couldn't cross them with my bike. But this section was pretty high up and uh, still like you can see the autumn colors going on. But uh, it was a very nice day indeed. Nice, nice. Sometimes you park your bike at the beach as well. You remember where that was? Yeah, this one is a recent one. Uh, it was in Santorini. Uh, it's a mm-hmm. famous island. You know, uh, it's probably all over the internet. Those white houses on the cliff uh, with the blue blue water. It's not far from here. Probably like eighty miles from here. Yeah. It's a it's a wonderful okay. island. It's a yeah, very happy that I checked it out before the lockdown. All right, where's that place? I I've seen a couple of pictures with the flags so wh- where is it this is a, a, a salt flat in bolivia it's a very famous uh, salt flat is the not sure if it's the biggest one in the world or is the deepest one in the world anyway it's it's very high up it's uh, above 3000 meters so above uh, i think uh, 9000 feet or something oh, uh, wow. above that so it's a uh, very high up and uh yeah, it's, they make these kind of sculptures made of salt. And uh, there was also the famous Dakar rally going through the Salar. So it's a very good place to ride your motorcycle if it's dry, but very bad place if it's wet because your motorcycle will get a lot of salt on it. I saw this picture on your Instagram. Was it, well, what was it? Was it Australia? Or what are the points that you have uh, marked there? Yeah, these are the kind of the 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 bookmarks of my maps me uh, about Australia, roughly because I think I lost the I lost the the, the original version of it. I tried to re remake remake it, and mm-hmm. but this is 
more or less the outline of my, my trip around Australia. So I started from Sydney and I went down to Melbourne and then I did Tasmania and then all the way around. All right. All right. And then I have a card here. I think it's a little bit covered with my, my video, but uh, can you give us some comments on that? Yeah. So pretty much this is what I've done so far. Uh, plus a little bit on the Eastern European part. But that was uh, Australia and then South America, Central America, and then uh, a loop of North America. So I went across Canada, then I went across the United States. And then mm -hmm. I flew from Vancouver to Ireland and I did uh, England and uh, all Western Europe. Nice, nice. Yeah. So Paulo, what is next when the shutdown uh, hopefully ends soon? Where are you going next? What are your plans? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I was supposed to go uh, toward Russia, toward Vladivostok, which is the, the very end of Russia. We're near Japan. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had my visa on my Italian passport. And uh, clearly, I can't go anywhere with my Italian passport at the moment. Yeah, right. So uh, it's, a, it's kind of a... Um, uh, unforeseen event that I have to reassess and uh, probably when the lockdown and the curf curfew uh, ends I'll probably take a ferry back to Italy uh, because for what I've heard is gonna last uh, until mid-June oh, mid so, yeah 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 hopefully hopefully crossing fingers are getting sooner than later so Paolo I would like to wrap this up where can the people, the audience, find out more about you and your travel trips? Well, it's mostly on my Instagram. I've been using Instagram. It's very useful for uh, daily uh, updates and pictures uh, as a photo journal. Uh, I've done some videos on YouTube, uh, which is, is linked in my uh, bio on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, just click on my Instagram and follow me and just click on the YouTube uh, channel. There's a few videos with my drone and a few videos uh, of my adventure through South America. Um, that's pretty much it, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you so much uh, for this interview. I You're hope welcome. you're staying healthy and safe. And uh, you as well. To you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a nice one. See you now. Cheers. Cheers.